Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is the captain speaking. <laughs> Today's TEDx talk will take around 15 minutes. And initially, we'll take you overhead some issues that we'd like to uh, highlight. Along the way, we may encounter some topics that may lead to some turbulence. So I hope you're seated comfortably. Cheryl and the team have give you, given you the important safety briefing. So I'm sure you're aware of your nearest available emergency exit. It's our mission today to ensure that your TEDx experience is not only safe, but intriguing and also enjoyable. If you're seated comfortably, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we'll get underway. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I normally give such a welcome as this on board an airliner, but today I had the great pleasure to be stood in front of you. You're now probably wondering, who is this guy and why is he here? Well, you see, a long time ago, I caught a bug. And for those of you in the front row, you don't need to get worried. It's not an Australian creepy crawly type bug, and neither is it an infectious type bug, but it is one that doesn't have an antidote and one that I'm happy to live with for the rest of my life. You see, a long time ago, I caught the travel bug. And it seems ever since, I've been living out of a suitcase. <laughs> Quite an evocative image, don't you think? Me as a child sat in an old suitcase. Perhaps this is where I got my you know, passion for travel, my love for it. Probably it's all about my sister being fed up with me and wanting to get rid of me as soon as possible. <laughs> Who knows? But ever since that point in time, I've been very fortunate as an airline pilot to travel the world. I've visited most continents, lived in five different countries and traveled over five million miles. The journey so far has been amazing. But how do you describe such passion for travel and the desire to get out and to explore? Well, the Germans have a great word. You may have come across it before. It's quite funky and very apt. Wanderlust. The desire to get out, to travel, to explore, to see something new. And you know what? The British have got a great word as well. Codywomple. <laughs> the desire to go purposely towards a destination unknown. Sounds a little bit like British politics right now, I think. <laughs> and the Scandinavians can't be left out of this conversation with their fika and all these other exciting things that they have. Resba is their word, the desire to travel, to get out and to, to explore the unknown. So it seems that all around the world we are connected by the desire to travel. But to begin a journey, you need to start somewhere. And my story starts in a remote agricultural community where the sheep outnumber the population 20 to 1. Australia is a big place. I mean, it's a really big place. This is almost hard to fathom. So whenever you had to go somewhere, it was a long way. And you would often ask your parents, are we nearly there yet? And the response would be, well, it's just around the corner, son. You'd look around the front seat and on the horizon, there was no corner. This is not the response you wanted. You see, around the world, lots of people have to travel for many reasons. And so travel is not a luxury, but it is a necessity for so many people. As an Aussie boy who grew up in the bush, I was surrounded by lots of nature and, and I had a fortunate upbringing. But as a kid in love with big machines and travel and technology, the bush wasn't where I wanted to be. So how was I going to satisfy my wanderlust living on an island continent where the distances are absolutely massive? The only quick way out, really, is to take off. Thus, I chose a career in aviation. The energy and excitement is exhilarating. Once, it, once you get on board that fast machine, you get to that new destination, that exotic experience that you have, once, once it gets under your skin and into your blood, it becomes a real passion. And so over the years, I've been very fortunate to travel around the world, seeing so many things, the aurora, all sorts of different things that have been so amazing, really. But also, I've seen some of the negatives. Travel is such a privilege, and one that I hope that our children's generate children's generation will benefit from. But we, we do need to consider the value of our travel that we take and not just take it for granted. It is a real privilege. So, many, many of us are now making choices that are starting to impact upon the environment. We all want to get out and explore. But those decisions that we're making are now starting to impact upon the environment. We're seeing unprecedented weather events uncontrollable bushfires, unprecedented heat waves, flooding leading to inland seas and coral bleaching. All these things just happening in Australia this year. And from a personal perspective, our family farm at home has not seen rain for 18 months. And where there should be grass, 
There is now dirt. We've now reached a point in our journey where we must ask ourselves collectively, should we continue to travel? Well, to help answer this question, let's look at a few facts. The aviation industry has facilitated our travel around the world, connecting people. We now cross continents with ease, safely and efficiently. We don't give it a second thought, really, about the safety of the air transportation system. How amazing is the fact that you're sat in an aluminium tube, six miles above the Earth, flying 500 miles per hour, outside air temperature minus 60 degrees, and all you're worried about is you've not got enough ice in your gin and tonic, or <laughs> will it be the chicken or will it be the beef today? <laughs> we do, we hop on board an aircraft without a second thought of the four million parts flying in close harmony, keeping us safely in the air. And do we get a, give consideration to the journey that you took to the airport? It's actually safer being on board the aircraft than driving there. Aviation has facilitated so many amazing things. So I'd like to point out a few of the positives to try and help make the case for aviation. Aviation is vital in providing time critical services, such as providing urgent medical treatment for those people who live in remote locations or during a natural disaster, providing relief aid. And for those people who live in remote locations, the only connection in or out all year round is via air transportation. We eat a lot of produce in the UK that can't be grown here. Did you know that 1.5 million lives are supported by the produce grown in Africa that's then transported to the UK? And it produces less CO2 than if the equivalent produce was grown here. If aviation as a sector, its financial output was measured in GDP, then it would be in the top 20. Tourism is so vital to so many developing nations around the world. I've seen it firsthand where a doctor is waiting at table because he earns more in tips than what he does doing what he loves. One in 11 people around the world are employed in tourism. And aviation breaks down borders. We share our wealth, our knowledge, our experience, our ideas. We bring people together. And you only need to take a look at North and South Korea to kind of understand what happens in a closed society. And most of all, I'm sure we've all experienced it, that travel brings people together, whether it be for a family holiday on a lovely sunny beach, or whether it is bringing people together after an absence, because nothing can replace a hug from a loved one. Nothing. But aviation, we're aware of some of the, the issues that there are. So even the brightest light can cast a shadow. And right now we're trying to put some mitigations in place to try and manage this issue. From 2020, the international aviation industry will have any expansion at carbon net zero. By offsetting any of this expansion by local projects will help to improve the, the wealth and well-being of people in local regions. And it is a fact that aviation contributes to global greenhouse gases. 2% of all emissions is due to aviation, but almost a quarter of that is due to the transport we take, the cars we drive, the other actions that we make. And quite surprisingly, just to put this into some context as well, global cities such as New York and Singapore and, and Tokyo wouldn't exist without the global cement industry which emits around 8% of all emissions. There is no single culprit. There are many factors to climate change, and we're all responsible. There's no silver bullet. We must take responsibility for the actions that we have taken. And we can start, actually, as individuals. We can do little things at home. The next time you choose to travel, do some research. Find the most efficient and eco uh, ecological airline that you can find and check that whether they fly around with full seats or not, you know, what we call a high load factor. You can also book an economy, fly direct, and offset your emissions. If you can't join a scheme, then do take some direct action. One of the most effective ways of combating and, and dealing with the emissions that happen in the world is to plant a tree. So plant a tree, or many if you can. It takes around 40 trees to absorb one tonne of carbon dioxide. So 
the aviation industry with Corsia has many uh, strategies to combat against that. Also within the industry, we're doing lots of other things that will help reduce emissions and make things more effective. A aircraft these days are more efficient than in the past, actually 20% more efficient. Air transport management uses big data to manage the way that we take off. You, you quite often hear about parts talking about slots. Also within the aviation industry, the airline tries to reduce the weight that it carries because less weight carry means less CO2 emissions. And by using biofuel, we can also cut emissions by about 80%. So there are lots of solutions out there. It really is, we've got lots of options within the industry, but we need your help. So as I mentioned, individually, when you're at home now, when you do choose to travel, you can fly direct and, and fly an economy as we discuss, but also at home, turn your thermostat down. Think about switching to 100% renewable electricity or even upgrade your car to a, an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle. There are lots of things that can make a difference. If we want to keep traveling and exploring this amazing world of ours, then we must change our attitude to altitude. If you want to keep flying, offset your emissions, but appreciate the benefits that travel brings to many people around the world. It's a wonderful world. Let's take the right sort of action so that our children can enjoy traveling it. Life's short. Take the trip, eat the cake, but do the little things that matter because they will all make a difference in the end if we act now. Thank you.